Hi, welcome to a series of videos on the locus of a point on an argon diagram. Now in this video I'll be looking at the locus of a point which remains at a constant distance from a fixed point in the complex plane. In other words, a circle. Now if I pause the video you'll see that the centre of the circle is at this point C and is given by the complex number Z1. And any point on the circumference, this point P here, is given by this complex number Z. Now the complex numbers follow the rules for vectors. So for instance, if I was looking at this radius vector, if you like, C to P, then you'll see I've written it as Z minus Z1. And that's because, just going back to basic vectors, if you wanted to go from C to P, it's the same as going from C to O followed by O to P. C to O, C to O, followed by O to P. But going from C to O is exactly the same as going in the opposite direction from O to C. So hence, minus OC. And then we follow it with O to P. So I can just switch these two terms round. I can say it's O to P minus O to C. So O to P is Z. O to C is Z1. Okay, so we end up with Z minus Z1 is this kind of radial vector, if you like. Okay? Now what I want to show you is how we can use this result to develop an equation for a point P moving in a circle in the complex plane. So a little bit of theory coming up now. If we take our circle then and we say that P is any point on the circle, Z is the complex number to that point P, and the centre of the circle is given by the complex number Z1, and we have just seen that Z minus Z1 represents this radial vector. Now, because this remains constant, it's the radius, then the magnitude or the modulus of Z minus Z1 must equal R, the radius. So this will define a circle, centre Z1, radius R, if we write then that the modulus of Z minus Z1, that modulus always equals the radius, R. And this is the equation that we will be using then to define a circle, centre Z1, radius r. Now this is a result that you should definitely try and remember. So we'll just put a box around it and uh, hopefully then as I say you'll try and learn that result. Now suppose we had this particular equation. Let's say we've got z minus 3 plus 2i. The mod of this result equals 4. Well, the question is, this represents a circle. Can you tell us what the centre of the circle is and what the radius is? So you might like to just quickly pause the video and come back when ready and check your answer with mine. OK, welcome back if you had a go. Well, this is quite a nice easy example, but you've just got to take a little bit of care over it because we need to write it in this format, and it's almost there. What we've got to do, though, is think of this as Z minus, and then if I put a bracket here, it's going to be 3 minus 2i inside that bracket. We've got the mod of that that equals 4. So it's in that form now, so you should be able to see then that therefore the center, okay, is at the point 3 minus 2. It has coordinates 3 minus 2. And the radius, 
well that is going to be equal to 4 okay now I've got another one here as well okay that you might like to try and this raises another point we've got the mod of 4 plus 5i minus z so this equals 3 again what I want you to do is to think about this one what is the center of the circle and what is the radius so again you might like to pause the video come back when ready and I'll run through the solution okay welcome back if you had a go let's see how you got on well for starters this is not in this format at the moment but I can soon get it in that format if I just rewrite this as the mod of minus 1 we we'll just pull out minus 1 as a common factor and then inside here I'd write z because we've got this minus z here so this is now going to be z and then I'd write minus 4 so that will give us the plus 4 and then minus 5i that would give us the plus 5i when that bracket is expanded and that equals 3 now what I can think of this as as being exactly the same because I've got a product here as the modulus of minus 1 okay multiplied by the modulus of z minus 4 minus 5i okay and that equals 3 now the modulus of negative 1 is 1 so I can just think of this then as the modulus of z minus and then I need to rewrite this in brackets as 4 and then plus 5i so I've now got it in the correct format okay so what we've got here now is again a circle it's got a center of 4 5 okay so we've got center with coordinates 4 5 and the radius okay is going to be equal to 3 units so take care when you get these negative ones like this okay so just pull your minus one out then it's the same as the modulus of each of these two values okay and uh, modulus of negative 1 then is 1 so we can just write it in this form right now my next example which uh, I would encourage you to try um, or certainly look at the work solution and that is what I want you to do is convert this to Cartesian form and to do this what we'll say is we'll let Z equal this point P which we said earlier was XA plus IY and the center of the circle Z1 let's say Z1 okay is equal to say A plus BI so see if you can work out what the Cartesian equation is of the circle We'll pause the video, come back when ready, and you can check your solution with mine. Okay, well, welcome back if you had a go. So, um, if we're just going to find the Cartesian equation, let's just write this down. Find the Cartesian equation. Okay, now, to do this, then, I've defined what I'd let Z be z is going to be equal to x plus i y and the center of the circle z1 is given by the complex number a plus b i so that means that if we substitute our values into here we've got the modulus of z which is going to be x plus i y then we subtract z1 which is a plus b i in general and then the modulus of this will equal the radius of the circle r 
Now if I group together real parts and imaginary parts, then what I'm going to therefore have is the modulus of x minus a for the real parts. Let's just put that in brackets. So we've got x minus a. And then for the imaginary parts, I've got, let's say, plus i multiplied by the y. And then this is minus bi, so I'm going to need minus b here. Okay, and that modulus of this complex number equals the radius r. Now when you're finding the modulus of a complex number, that is exactly the same as doing the square root then of the sum of the squares of the two parts here, the real part and the imaginary part. So in other words, this is the same as the square root of x minus a all squared plus y minus b, all squared. And that's going to equal r. And if we square both sides, we therefore have x minus a, all squared, plus y minus b, all squared, is equal to r squared. And this is our Cartesian equation then for the equation of a circle. And you should be familiar with this from uh, your coordinate ge geometry of the circle. Okay, so x, y, any point on the circle, a, b, the center, and r, the radius. All right, so I hope this video has given you some insight anyway into doing questions like this.